Once you've got yourself into the mindset of believing that um, Brexit or the world revolution can't possibly go wrong, if it does go wrong, you immediately need to look for scapegoats and saboteurs. And that's um, very much uh, at the centre of the Brexit narrative. I'm John Stevens. I'm the chair of the Federal Trust. And I'm talking once again to Brendan Donnelly, the director of the Federal Trust, about some recent developments related to Brexit. Brendan, Dominic Raab's resignation has caused quite a stir, rather more than might be expected, since he is a person who for quite a long time, even in conservative circles, has been regarded as uh, not tremendously significant, not a gentleman and not a very uh, capable minister. And yet his departure has aroused a controversy that has a very significant Brexit dimension to it. Why is this? Well, I wasn't surprised that um, Brexit was very near the surface um, in the matter of Raab's resignation. Uh, all his career has been geared around Brexit. He's been the poster boy of a, a certain kind of uh, muscular Brexitry. Um, and it, without that um, uh, particular commitment, that um, uh, outspoken commitment to Brexit, uh, I don't think he would ever have got to the political eminence which, which he's achieved. Um, Brexit is the recent history of the Conservative Party, and the Conservative Party is dominated by Brexit. Um, so when he found himself in trouble, it was inevitable in my mind that um, Brexit would always be, be lurking very near the surface. His resignation was accompanied by an extraordinary attack by him on the civil service and mounting the accusation that he was forced out really by pro-EU civil servants who wanted to undermine Brexit and that therefore he was a victim, a, a sort of martyr to the cause of leaving the European Union. I mean, is there any substance to this at all? Well, there's no factual substance to it, but it's a view widely held in Brexit circles that um, that um, they are both the um, the authentic voice of the people uh, and the victims of the blob or whoever it is they 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 think are their enemies at, at the time. Uh, I've known a number of civil servants who found themselves caught up in having to make Brexit work, and they've done their absolute best conscientiously to try and make it work. Um, but it can't be made to work. And uh, it's been very difficult for them because they know it can't be made to work. Uh, and yet they're constantly being told um, that if they don't make it work, it, it's their fault. Um, I'm very struck by the similarity between the, the attitude of a, a certain kind of Brexit minister like Dominic Raab uh, and the, the rhetoric and uh, ideas of the 1930s in, in the Soviet Union. Where, where people who were committed to the revolution, to the Marxist revolution, um, genuinely believe that if the, if the revolution wasn't working, that must be because of saboteurs undermining it from within. It must be a counter-revolutionary plot. plot. Um, and anyone who told them different was probably him or herself a saboteur. Once you've got yourself into the mindset of believing that um, Brexit or the world revolution can't possibly go wrong, if it does go wrong, you immediately need to look for scapegoats and saboteurs. And that's um, very much uh, at the centre of the Brexit narrative. Nevertheless, this is more than simple propaganda, is it not? Because there does seem to be a serious attempt to uh, talk about a fundamental reform of the civil service. This is becoming a, a mainstream uh, conservative uh, notion. And even the Financial Times seems to, um, in, in reacting to Raab's resignation, has suggested that this might lead to uh, attempts um, by a future conservative government to bring through a, a fundamental reform of the civil service in a much more political direction. And indeed, already we have some evidence of that, the extent to which this government has been employing uh, think tanks of various kinds. One thinks of the IEA or um, the um, uh, policy Center for Policy Studies, um, Policy Exchange, all of whom have, have been in receipt of significant contracts from the government in doing research and whose leading figures um, have been uh, major 
advisors to the government. So in a sense, this pressure to reform and politicize our civil service is quite well advanced already. Oh, I, I, I think it has to be taken with a pinch of salt. I think it's much more rhetorical than real. Uh, I think if the government, if any government wanted fundamentally to change the ethos of the British civil service, um, which is one of, of an attempted um, neutrality. Um, uh, it would take a, a, a great deal more effort and uh, grasp um, of administrative reality and uh, administrative um, coherence than this particular government has. Um, I, it's uh, an example of the way in which um, uh, Brexit dominates everything. Um, Brexit can't be achieved. Therefore, we'll look for some panacea which will make it work. Uh, and at the moment, the one happens to be um, politicising the civil service. Um, I think there are arguments in favour of it and arguments against it. Um, but it, it can't be a, a lasting answer um, to the problem of Brexit. And, and that's all that the Conservative Party um, and its, um, its courtier press, its courtier think tanks are, are interested in, in the mo at the moment. One area where, however, it might be substantial is in the very specific issue of the political um, independence of the Bank of England over interest rate policy. There, there does seem to be uh, quite a lot of pressure. Um, the only thing that has restrained it so far is concern over the likely market reaction. But coming back to the broader political um context of Raab's resignation. I mean, do you think this uh, helps the, the Labour Party opposition um, to any degree? To, to, how does this feed into the, the current political debate ahead of these local elections? I, I think the Conservative Party was harmed by, by the way in which uh, Raab, but Dutch Sunak, clearly hesitated before sacking Raab or inviting him, encouraging him to resign. Uh, I think that did present um, Sunak in a, a, a negative light and it threw doubt on his supposed commitment to competence uh, uh, and integrity. I, I think the, the ill-humoured and graceless way in which um, Raab reacted was also um, uh, something that has been noted and has harmed the Conservative Party. It's all very well trying to... Um, get credit uh, for resigning because a, and a report has gone against you. But then when in the next breath you turn around and say that the report was entirely wrong, that it was based on wrong assumptions, it had too low a bar for bullying, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, then that will undermine any sort of claim you might have had to be behaving well and be behaving appropriately. Uh, on the other hand, I, I think that the Labour Party have, have got a danger if they simply attempt to wait uh, for the, the electorate to rise up in their just wrath against the Conservative Party. Uh, I, I think there probably will be enough discontent with the Conservative Party over the coming, over the coming 18 months uh, for there to be a Labour victory. Uh, but I, I'm afraid that, that, that I sense that the Labour Party take it in some ways too much for granted in the sense that they think they 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 can say the absolute minimum, um, and then they'll have the fruits of their prudent silence delivered to them at the end of next year. Uh, I think I think there are people who are beginning to wonder: uh, is it enough to have a, a Labour Party which is simply not saying anything and watching the Conservative Party self immolating? That that applies particularly to Brexit, I think. Well, certainly. It has been widely speculated that Dominic Raab's would not have re resigned had his own seat uh, been more secure uh, in a general election. He has a very narrow major majority. Um, so maybe there is at least a an awareness in the government circles that they face a very significant challenge in the forthcoming general election. But we will have to see. Brendan, many thanks for this. Um, just, just make one more fur further point about, about Brexit and the, and the Labour Party's attitude. I, th I think that um, that's an area in which they're particularly unnecessarily cautious. We've had some quite interesting polling coming out recently, uh, which has suggested that, that even in their own terms of worrying about losing the red wall seats, um, a more uh, positive tone on Brexit, uh, against Brexit and in favour of rejoining the single market, rejoining the customs union, whatever it was, um, wouldn't go down badly with the, um, the Labour voters that Labour are concerned to, um, to, to haul in 
in 2024. Um, I, I think that, that, that there is a, a sense in, in Starmer in particular that if you don't say anything, you're not saying anything wrong. Um, I, I wonder how long that um, that passive attitude can continue uh, before people begin to ask themselves questions. Is that good enough? The conservatives are, are pretty, pretty awful. A lot of people will say. Um, but do we want to replace them simply um, by by a mummy? by, by a, a wise monkey seeing, hearing and saying nothing. Um, uh, I'm not sure how that's going to pan out. Well, Brandon, thank you very much for this. We will see um, in future discussions how things develop. Thank you very much.